Hey, I'm Kirby Atwell from Living Off Rentals, and about a year and a half ago, my wife and I bought some land that was really overgrown. It had a 1860s farmhouse on it that needed to be fully rehabbed, and it had a bunch of barns, a bunch of outbuildings that were being used for animals or for equipment storage, and pretty much everything needed to be rehabbed. I'm someone who's always thinking through the lens of how can I have the life I want, you know, use that as the starting point, but then how can I make it cost as little as possible? A lot of times the difference between having nice things that are a huge costly liability and having those exact same things for free is often just a simple mindset shift. So in this particular situation, we had success with our previous house on the beach being almost completely paid for by the little one bedroom apartment that we had in our basement. And so we thought to ourselves, how can we expand this? And so we started looking for land and we found this 45 acres, but what we were particularly looking for is land with a house on it so that we could get conventional second home loan type of financing with only 10% down, a super low interest rate with the intent to rehab everything and start building out income streams on the property. I've talked to people over the years who want to adopt this strategy, often referred to as land hacking, where you buy some land with a house on it so you can get that conventional financing, and then you live on the, the property in the house, and then you use the land to generate income. Obviously, this is something farmers have been doing for centuries. But farming is just one option. In today's sharing economy, the cool thing is there's a whole bunch of other higher and better uses for the land so if you want to farm, that's awesome, but then you can tack on these other super high revenue generating strategies and the barn is one of them. I always recommend people start a big land hack project like this in phases. So for us, the first phase was to rehab the house so that we could move into it personally and we lived there. And then we also rented out on Airbnb when we want to travel or we want to be away from the house. And it's amazing how many people want to leave the city, get out to the country, stay in a farmhouse on a bunch of land. So that was the first step. But then the second step was rehabbing this barn behind me. So we tried to think through how we could create as much value in every single aspect of what we incorporate into this huge 55 foot by 65 foot, basically blank canvas open barn that was built back in the 90s. So after a whole bunch of planning and talking about it, we decided to incorporate five main aspects into the barn that are either gonna generate or save us money. The first one is using this section to create a small Airbnb unit that sleeps six people. The second big value add in the biggest use of square footage is using the space behind me to build out my wife's antique shop called The Good Farm, which again, is another big revenue generator. The third big value add is adding this gym fitness center because this allowed us to cancel our expensive gym membership, it keeps us healthy, and also it increases the nightly rate and occupancy on the Airbnb unit because the, the guests can use it as well, and there's a lot of guests that are much more likely to book and pay a higher fee to have access to a gym facility. We also added an office, still to be set up, where I can work on my business. The fifth value add component that we incorporated into the barn is this storage area, which is an absolute disaster behind me. But eventually these shelves are gonna contain all the supplies for our 16 Airbnbs. So this will be like a central hub where we can go get the supplies we need to go restock the supply closets at our Airbnbs. By the way, if you want the checklist of what we put in the supply closets at our Airbnbs, you can download it in the description below. And finally, a sixth sort of bonus component that's not in the barn, but it is attached to the barn, is this cool covered patio area. So this was actually being used to house cattle when we bought the place, and so we cleaned it up, we renovated it, and now it's this big open space with a concrete floor that's perfect for hosting events or weddings, and again, another revenue generating opportunity for us. So we're still kind of getting things set up, but out of all the aspects of the barn, it's this Airbnb unit that generates the most income for us just since we started offering it about a month and a half ago. And you might be saying, who wants to sleep in a barn? But it's the same type of people who are gonna pay a premium to sleep in a tree house or a yurt or an igloo. As an Airbnb host, you really need to think about yourself differently than a typical landlord who's investing in more utilitarian, vanilla type of properties. As a short-term rental host, you're compensated in a lot of cases much, much higher than a typical landlord 
for providing a cool and unique experience in a barn really falls into that category. So the mind blowing component of this whole thing is that our conservative estimates just for this Airbnb are about $170 a night with an 80% occupancy rate. So across the entire year, that means we're gonna bring in about $4,000 per month, which is more than our entire mortgage for this whole property. So this one little unit, which takes up 800 square foot in a much larger footprint in a much bigger barn on a much bigger property, which has our separate house that our family lives in on it, is going to pay for our entire cost of living. After you finish a, a project like this, there's always things that you think about that you would have done different. And really, the only thing that I would have done different on this project is actually create two separate units. So add an additional unit. Since this was our first time rehabbing something like this, we didn't really have a good judge of how much space we were gonna have. And so it would have been pretty easy to take some of the, the square footage from the shop and from the storage area and make another unit that would be a, another cool and unique experience. And what I found is that managing a duplex, managing two different units in the same location really isn't that much more work than managing one, but it's almost double the revenue. So if you're gonna do something like this and you have the space, I'd highly recommend looking at two units if you possibly can. Hopefully this was helpful for you if you're thinking about building or renovating a barn of your own. This particular Airbnb is a little bit different than the other 15 that we own that provide our main source of income. But if you're interested in our process for finding, buying, and setting up really high cash flowing vacation rentals, you can go to livingoffrentals.com backslash start. We've got a free masterclass that will walk you through the entire process. I hope you'll check it out, but if not, I'll see you in the next video.